now move on to factoring trinomials in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, don't worry about the a, b, and c right now. Just know this. When you see a number here that's greater than 1, you're probably going to want to do this form of factoring of the trinomial. When I look at this trinomial, the very first thing I want to do is to see if there is a common factor that I can pull out to the front to simplify it. I notice there is no common factor. Of the three terms, there is nothing in common that I can pull out. So, I also notice that this exponent here is twice this exponent here. And that's going to make it possible for me to factor this into the final version of what most of you see as the FOIL. Okay, something that can be FOILed. All right, so this is factoring trinomials when the a is greater than 1. This little position here is greater than 1. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to copy the first and the last terms. But we're going to spread them out a little bit to give this center space a little more room. The second step is for me to multiply the first, the leading coefficient with the constant. Or in other words, multiply the first and last numbers. 2 times 15 is 30. I'm going to write 30 over here, and I'm going to list all of the factors of 30. In order. 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, and 5 times 6. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually split up the middle term into two things that will give me a 13. The question is, when we're factoring these kinds of trinomials, is whether these two things should add to the middle or subtract from the middle. I don't want you to worry about that right this minute because I'm going to give you the rules. Here are the rules. If I see a plus in the last for the last term, if the last term is a plus, I'm going to add these two numbers to give myself a 13. Here's what I mean. I look at my list of factors over here. I notice that 2 and 15 would give me a 13 if I subtracted them, but 3 and 10 would give me a 13 if I added them. How do I know which to do? I'm always going to be adding to the middle term if there's a plus in the last position. So I pick the 3 and the 10 because those two will add to 13. So Now, I double check visually to make sure that this plus this does give me that. And it does. Now, this should look suspiciously familiar to you because we just went through the steps of factor by grouping. This is an actual factor by grouping problem now. So we'll proceed with the steps you use to factor something by grouping. My first step, as you noticed before in the lecture, was to circle up the two first terms and the two last terms. These are the groups, thus factor by grouping. My next step is going to be to pull out a common factor out of this first grouping. I notice there are no common numbers, but there is a common letter that they both contain, and that is the letter X. I pull out the X, and I'm left with a 2X plus 3. I visually check. Does this times this give me this? Yes, it does. 
Does this times this give me this? Yes, it does. I copy down my plus sign. I look to the second two to see if there is a common factor and it is a five. Or I look to see what that common factor is, a five. I pull it out. I will still have a binomial when I've pulled it out. What is remaining here, isn't that handy, the parentheses match. Now we knew the parentheses had to match for this to actually work in factor by grouping. Now, as we did before, I'm going to show you that this is just a binomial with a term plus a term. Term in green plus term in green. If you look carefully, you see that there's a common factor of 2x plus 3 in each green term. I'm going to take the red 2x plus 3 in each term and pull it to the front. Here's the red 2x plus 3 that I'm going to pull out. I'm going to be left with a big binomial. So my 2x plus 3 comes out here. When I've pulled that out, the only thing remaining on the green is the x plus 5. I finish up with a parentheses, and that's my, this is my answer. If I were to FOIL this, it really would go back to that. Now, isn't that easy? If you would like, on this, on the, uh, as an additional step, you may want to go ahead and write them a little more spaced out properly because this second one was rather spread out. So, there's my answer. This took no guessing and checking. It only took math skills. And there you have it.